Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so I just wanted to wait a couple minutes to see if anyone else is going to join. Yeah, I'm going to wait another another minute. But welcome. Frequency, embodiment, and melanin, ophonic, space. What does that mean? Good question. Yeah, I just wanted to start with a, a little grounding, actually. So the intention I wanted to set today is an inv- invitation to sit with the question, how does the listening feel? And if you want, you can add your responses. But yeah, just, just keep a track. Just notice um, as I'm sharing things with you today. A black hole is the result of immense light. And you are that same light. Because blackness is not mere absence, but rather an abundance. Black Black, obsidian obsidian in the pocket closest to my heart, I am protected. I place the smooth volcanic rock in the palm of my hand. A black angel stands in a nocturnal graveyard, looking on. Become aware of your breathing. Notice the influx of air through your nostrils. Allow your belly to expand. Hold for the count of one, two, three. Feel your stomach contract as you breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three. Acknowledge any anger, pain or suffering you might feel. 
I gaze into the glossy surface of the stone just long enough to reveal the source of my distress, obsidian. Transitions, no matter the context, are a political moment, a chance to detach from weighted positions, a chance to be moved.
So I'll stop that there. But um, what I will do is um, at the end, I'm going to put a list of all the links to the sound clips and video clips I'm playing if you do want to hear the full thing. Um, And that was the Black Obsidian Meditation, which I made in collaboration with Melodramatics um, as part of BOSS. A, a sound system that I am involved in. So how... There we go. So actually really recently um, I was introduced to the work of Dr. Jewel Pokram and um, Yeah, her work is really amazing. And in this uh, particular video, which I'm going to have to go out of my slideshow to show you, she talks a bit about the relationship between melanin and light. Now, obviously, the more melanin you have, because it will be revealed to you for those who are not aware but the scientists who do know this already, pigment that exists in living organisms. As a matter of fact, all pigments are the physical manifestation of light. So most of us just think that light is something that perhaps just comes out of the sky or through a light bulb or uh, LED emitting apparatus, the TV set, or whatever. It does have a physical form, a condensed physical form known as melanin. Now, whether that is of the chlorophyll nature or lycopene, because all of these different pigments, as they have a dense physical body, still exhibit the frequencies of light that they have collapsed in their most dense physical form. So when you're actually looking, for example, at the plant pigments, the purple, the blue, the red, you are looking at that frequency of light in its physical manifestation. It is the pigment that now given that frequency of light a physical capability, dimensional capability. And so we know that when all of the spectrums of light are together, it appears as though there's no light. Why? Because they are actually absorbed into the cell. So there's nothing that is actually being emitted that our retina, that our eyes can see. So it appears to be black. So blackness is full of light, but the light is being held into itself. It's not being emitted. So that means that that particular frequency of wavelength of quantum particles vibrating and perceived light is what we are seeing. Melanin is this quality. And so we know for a fact that those individuals who are hardwired with navy blue black melanin definitely have the capability of interacting with all forms of identifiable light that is embedded in their tissue. And the individuals who are melanin recessive are still hardwired, but the amount that that circuitry can transmit is still relative to the amount of melanin pigment that they have, which can be increased at will. This is very, very important. This show is dedicated to advancing the awareness of humanity to understand that the condition that their physicality, their body may be in at any particular moment in time can be changed and transformed relative to what the individual desires and what the environment demands. Hey there, I'm Mike Rugnetta. This is Crash Course So I'm not actually sure if you got to see the video, but hopefully you were able to hear the sound, at least. And then, so I wanted to play um, an extract from a, a radio play that I wrote about five years ago. Um, It's called Scenario One at the Icebox. So I'm going to play a three-minute clip of what is 
a sort of hour long play, but hopefully it'll give you a, a little sense of what it's about. Zed became a crystalline structure, like the Hura, impenetrable, and I sparkle on in the corner of their eye, a shining light, no more distractions, in the groove, I can, I did, I do, I catch Zed, in the eye, still today, they glimmer, shining bright, a star, this night, I remember that day, when we first met, and you caught me, you caught me with the way you move, like juke or cramp, a bit cakewalk, so fierce like fire, a heat that fills the room, your moves. I left you through foul play, the matter today still undetermined. They say I spoke up too much, but does a voice this loud deserve the death penalty? Zed maintains a crystalline structure, impenetrable, and I sparkle on in the corner of their eye. Others look on and wonder. Why does it glint and glisten, shine, shimmer, splendor, light, visibility, everyday prestige is power, a spectacular performance is political. Highlights, re-envisioning self and social status through its optics. Luminous objects in the frame, neon, incandescent and fluorescent, highly reflective, metallic or wet surface. The entire structure, the ice box, a reflection on a shiny surface. Optics shine splendor. That generates an audience, a succession of images. May her soul, my soul, rest in perfect peace. The disco ball starts to turn, happy viewing. A familiar motif, an attraction. Refracted light feels like seduction. It transports. A portal. A portal. 2A, 2 41A, 01, So that extract was, um, Yes, yeah, from a radio play, which I forgot to name. It's called This Catalogue of Poses. And the sonic aspect was made in collaboration with um, Agarafu, uh, an Amsterdam-based producer. And, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. There we go. Um, and, and the play actually came to life um, as a result of, yeah, coming across this photograph. And yeah, I was just really intrigued by these four figures. And I started to um, imagine and wonder and speculate on, yeah, how they came to be, be in, this, in this space and, yeah, I was kind of wanting to kind of think through, um, yeah, all the various aspects of their lives and how they intertwine with each other. And the the play um, also kind of incorporates aspects of like time travel and is sort of set in the past, present and future um, simultaneously, which, yeah, I really feel like this this image kind of is somehow, there's, I don't know, the mirror 
comes if so portal. Ah, okay. And so, um, yeah, now I wanted to think a little bit with and through the sacred drum. So again, I'm not sure my video. Yeah, the video isn't working in my presentation. So Okay, so I will Um, Ibi, Ibi Okon performing the song Elegba in New York in 1995 and um, okay, I can't go back to this and so the central figure in that video is um or was i should say um amelia pedroso who was an icon of afro-cuban culture a highly respected percussionist singer teacher and performer of afro-cuban ritual music so she was also considered an expert in the texts of yoruba ritual music in cuba and in 1995 amelia toured to the us with her all women vocal and per percussion group Ibi Oko, as we just saw, and she was also an out lesbian, which is pretty um, radical even now, and you know especially then. 
um, so in her lifetime, she was a, a godmother in the East to many. And so through Emilia Pedroso, her music, her work, her legacy, I consider the potential of the drum to speak um, and to communicate with, of, and from the sacred. So let me go back into this. So a sacred drum. So I'm just going to read a, a quote from a book I came across recently. So drumming engages the conscious mind and like meditation cuts back on its continuous chatter. As a result, as happens after practicing meditation, the habitual patterns of thinking that drive our behaviors become less powerful. And that's from the book. Um, and that's a section called Sacred Drumming from the book, When the Drummers Were Women, A Spiritual History of Rhythm by Lane Redmond. And the image on the left that you can see here is um, some hieroglyphics from that, that same book. And I really like how the word joy and to be a frame drum are the same word. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I also put this, um, this inside cover of a, a guy called Gerald. Um, oh, I didn't put it here, but it's from the album Black Secret Technology from 1995. And I will read that. So before there was soul, hip hop, electro, house, techno, old school style, there was the sound of tribal beats coming from the area, widely known for the first life on this planet. The first man on earth also walked here. This man developed a way of communic communicating, which was to become an important part of his survival. These strange patterns of sound were called rhythm. Rhythm then was not a le leisurely thing, it was a way of life. Methods of rhythm helped early man to get in touch with the universe and his small part in it. He discovered some of the rhythms of nature. I believe that some of these trance-like rhythms reflect my frustration to know the truth about my ancestors who taught with drums. Does time work in rhythm or does rhythm work in time? We have advanced to a level where we can control time slow, solely by stretching of sound. We play with time. Get it? Gerald Beat in the Jungle, 1995, Manchester. And so again, I want to put out the question, how does the listening feel? So I'm going to read um, a couple of extracts from poems by Maud Salter. So the first one is from Historical Objects. Slavery days, and here I find you still on the plantation now, yet differently guys, yet still in bondage. And freedom, freedom has an empty call when I see you still chained to their supremacist belief in themselves. They cannot be allowed any longer to rewrite our experience. Call it Marxist or feminist, history or history, no longer, no more. Car is rising, car is rising. Listen, listen, you can hear her call for car is rising. Car is rising, hear, come hear her call. And then from Full Circle, and yeah, both of these extracts are from a book of poetry called The Bat, Poetics of a Family Tree. Recognize yourself, heritage, responsibility, worth, more precious than gold weights, the spirit of car. And I remember when I, when I first came across these poems, I was really curious, like, what is this car? You know, I was trying to kind of un unpack and understand um, what it meant 
um, and of course, like I kind of had a kind of bodily or intuitive sense of what it means. But then it was really, um, again, really exciting to realize that it's, you know, and it, it's an ancient Comitian, an ancient Egyptian term. Um, and so this little um, image I found here just kind of uh, defines that. Sakar is the part of the person's soul that is the aspect part of the universal soul or spirit that lived on after death the life forces, both divine and personal. The symbol that you see, which is two arms outstretched in the air, is the life-giving energy and universal spirit. The universal spirit. Hmm. Now I'm gonna play a little guy called Gerald. Universal spirit elevates your soul, takes you on a journey where you want to go.
Okay, what's that? Where's my computer skinny guy? Yeah, so that was Universal Spirit by a guy called Gerald Vocals by Wendy Page. Apologies for not putting that in the PowerPoint. And the album is, what's it called? It's called Essence, which again, great album title. And then the diagram on the right yeah, suggestion for how we might flow with the energy of the universe, which to me just looks like dancing, right? You can tell I'm a seasoned Zoom <laughs> presenter. <laughs> ah, okay, healing frequencies. Healing frequencies. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, the way that I've used um, healing frequencies in my work. You know, I'm really um, interested and excited by uh, the potential for, for sound to heal and transform on a cellular level. And um, yeah, towards the end of 2019, I presented a, a, a work, an installation called Prophetic Map Mark One, Toju Bafara Bale. And Toju Bafara Bale is a, a Yoruba proverb which loosely translates to um, look beyond the butterfly that is on your nose. And um, yeah, the image you see here is um, a kind of shot of um, a part of the installation. And yeah, I really like this image because it's, yeah, the work is being activated, it's being enjoyed, um, it's being in engaged with in the way that, um, yeah, I really imagined it to be. And it was part of the exhibition Transformer, a rebirth of wonder, which happened. At 180 The Strand, um, yeah, towards the end of last year. And so I created uh, two separate sound works actually for this um, exhibition. One was for this space and then um, the entrance space that you, cut, that you sort of enter the show in through. So each with a different frequency. And I'm gonna, and the, the image you're looking at here, the work was tuned to, uh, 528, 528 hertz. And so the intention was that the work be simultaneously uh, transformative in the moment of experiencing it, but that, you know, with the repeat engagement, it could, yeah, like I said, kind of also restore and regener regenerate on a cellular level. And, you know, intention and setting intention is uh, really important for me and that's why I always try and set an intention in a space that I'm holding and also try to do that in the, the sound works or the works in general itself and and so I'm gonna play a little extract from this uh, work but before I do I just want to talk a little bit about you know this particular frequency because it's seen as um, the healing frequency and so even though, you know, the reparative effects of the frequency are still very much like in its infancy in terms of scientific research, you know, there is, there are, there has been some published work that, um, that indicates, you know, the ability that this frequency does have to heal and repair the body. And there's the particular study that happened in 2018 in Japan that discovered that music tuned to the frequency of 528 hertz significantly reduced stress in the endocrine systems and automatic nervous systems, even after five, just five minutes of listening. And in a study published in the Journal of Addiction Research and Therapy, the frequency of 528 hertz reduced the toxic effects of ethanol the principal ingredient found in alcohol 
on film. And so, you know, even more astounding to that fact was the fact that it increased cell life by about 20%. Um, yeah, and there's a, an article that talks a bit of, a, a lot more about that. And like I said, I'll post some links to that in the chat at the end. But so I'm gonna play is, um, yeah, about four and a half. So just under your five minutes daily recommended intake, but um, just up to five minutes of, um, of the piece, which was actually, um, each piece was 11 minutes, 11 seconds long. Expansion. The feeling of weightless expansion. Consider the feeling of being full. Consider the feeling of being full. exactly what you need to be doing right now. Don't be so hard on yourself. Body. Healing. frequency of now what frequency are you vibrating in are you tuned into the frequency of what you want or what you fear adjust the dial as necessary breathe there adjust the dial as necessary return back to your own frequency Unbound tightly, release. in me. God is alive in all of us. Be your own God.
Yes, I just want to thank the um, the contributors as well who worked with me on this, uh, so the sound design and the collaboration with Josh and Neil Grigg, um, with additional vocals by Toby Adebayo and Petty Golden Paradise Music with the mix and master by Kira Keld. Danielle. I just want to echo some of the words that were in that piece. Focus on your frequency of now. What frequency are you vibrating in? Are you tuned in to the frequency of what you want or what you feel? Adjust the dial as necessary. Breathe there. Adjust the dial as necessary. Return back to your own frequency. You can see. So how does the listening feel? So I think about um, the proposition that I pose with melanophonic space um, as being the creation of a, of a sacred space. It makes sound spatial and sacred in its blackness, intentional. It's affirming and asked, how does the listening feel? Anchored across work, songs and practices, such as the ones you heard just now, are the loop, the chorus, the affirmation, repetition and reiteration, the echo, an effective encounter. So I wanted to make sure I had time for questions, but it doesn't look like there are any, um, but just putting that out there once more. Anybody does, I'm gonna post the link to the references in the chat there. Yeah, that's it for me. Hope everyone has an amazing afternoon.